Good day, guys. Had a few uh, items come in um, over the last, well, God, forever, actually. But uh, just recently, I've had some items come in and uh, people saying that they didn't work or they're intermittent or all sorts of uh, um, weird stuff. And uh, a lot of it's to do with uh, these type of connectors that are basically uh, throughout the... Uh, metal detecting industry for add-ons i mean there's, there's different connectors of course there's you know smaller ones but these are pretty standard on most of the equipment and what i thought well i've fixed up the other ones and what i usually do and what actually happens in a lot of them and i'll just use this as an example where you got like i'm using very thin wire here this is for one of my own projects and uh I want it flexible because I want to just wiggle it around on the bench, not big thick wires. It's hard to bend and put things into position. So what most people do, and I, I've seen multiple ways of doing this, but they just get this metal bit here uh, and just squash it and clamp the wire hard. And all it does is just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle on the uh, where it's clamped hard and cuts through and breaks. Uh, so, yeah. And on most metal detector stuff too, that uh, we don't use the ground, the, the earth, the outer body. Uh, we always use stereo connectors and we use the tip and the next connector. And that is pretty standard uh, for everything. So, you know, even um, if you've got stereo headphones and you have a, uh, a ground reference, um, they're all set up in a particular way that it just goes from here through one of the headphones, through the other headphone, and then back to the tip. And it just, uh, yeah, basically quarter of the power, half the impedance. So, yeah, it is softer. If you wanted to make your headphones um, louder, you could change uh, the way it's wired onto the plug, parallel up the wires coming out the headphone uh, to here rather than going in a series configuration. Depends how it's wired. Some people, um, some... Uh, um, companies wire it up uh, as in a, like a dual mono type thing, ground reference, and others um, have it looped around and others have it uh, parallel across those two connectors. It depends who did it, uh, different flavours. But if you, if you find your headphones probably a little bit weak, uh, it, it could be because they're running high impedance drivers and they're in series like 216 ohms. Uh, 32 ohms, uh, or even worse still, you can have uh, two 32 ohm drivers in your headphones and that'll be 64 ohms and you're not going to get much power through that unless you're running a lot of voltage. And most of these detectors on the audio are only putting out uh, three or five, you know, six volts uh, maximum. You're not going to get uh, much through that amount of resistance. But anyway, with these connectors, and the, this is the way I'm doing my ones here, this is pretty flexible cable um, use actually on headphone interconnects left to right uh, in the band but I'm just using it uh, on here but I've seen people they get bits of uh, rubber and they cut it off and they put the rubber in here and the wire through the rubber and all sorts but uh, the quickest and easiest one I've just been doing this lately and I never had a problem is uh, I'll turn that round like so is our friendly hot melt glue gun. So I'll just move that. Oh, I've tightened all this stuff, haven't I? Yeah, it's all tight. Okay, here we go. I'll move it down a bit. So with our um, uh, Chinese hot melt glue gun, which actually this one's going good. It hasn't uh, done a complete meltdown or burnout yet. It, it does have a little bit of, uh, it has some sort of, drippy business going on there but yeah well i'm used to that and it hasn't um blown up like some of them do but yeah basically what i do now is i don't worry about these these two here as long as they're equal they're not stressed or anything and uh what i do is i just get the hot melt uh glue gun and uh i'm just looking at the camera so i make sure that you can see it what do i do just hope it's hot enough. Maybe it's not. I didn't turn it on that long ago. Should be hot enough. Come on. Heat up. There we go. Yes, do that. 
stick some hot melt in there and just hold the cable in the middle and you probably want to uh, blow on that to uh, make it uh, cool down or put it somewhere and hold it in that position and yeah that because um, because a hot melt glue is quite uh, rubbery and I don't hang on, I just want to get rid of this glue gun need multiple hands here there we go flip that out put that down there and uh, yeah that's basically it if you really want you can lick your fingers and smooth it off not that you need to and if you want to be really pedantic uh, if you're running metal shells like these things here are plastic these are these are from J car <laughs> they you know I just went down and bought them from J car because David's got the big supply of these uh, things but they're all uh, Japanese um, high quality ones I spent some cheapies so yeah stick it there and uh, as you can see even though you got uh, you know this rubbery bit here uh, some people glue in here you run some glue in there as well or whatever but you know say if you want to pull it apart but well, I just do that and, you know done these aren't bad connectors actually so even though it's a very skinny wire I'm using, it uh, makes a pretty foolproof type of uh, um, connection. And uh, yeah, you can yank on it and pull on it. You know, it's probably, if you wanted to uh, do, say you run boosters on your detectors, okay? So you want to have an inter interconnect cable or something and you want it nice and thin so it's easy to bend and short and whatever. This sort of cable here, probably what you'd... Uh, used rather than big thick cable so yeah you make all your adapters up out of uh, thin stuff like that and yeah <laughs> save a gram of weight or something but i just thought i'd uh do that oh yeah i'm making up some uh audio uh stuff at the moment so i will um yeah get back into it and uh um yeah i mean God, what else can I say? It's pretty simple, isn't it, really? But I, I think that's an easy way of doing it. And like I say, if you're running the metal shells, and if you really want to be pedantic, like I say, put a dab of uh, hot melt on the terminal, so like there, um, and just incorporate that into um, gluing in here, and that'll protect it. It won't short on the shell. Normally they come with a plastic sleeve. Sometimes they don't. It just, just disappears. So hot melt glue uh, is a is a really good insulator and uh, holds things in place. So yeah, both of those will be done like that. That's um, yeah, just a quick a quick video if you want to make your own leads up and uh, yeah, it'll probably do us you know eight eight minutes of uh, talking about plugs. All good fun. Uh, I'm still working on these detectors, uh, doing my experiments on. Uh, getting the uh, things sensitive and quiet, uh, more so with newer componentry. We'll go into that in later videos, but uh, that'll do. And uh, it's meant to be Christmas today, so I just want to get this done and uh, then I'm going to knock off catches.